Aqua friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Nicole Cordemosh and today we are going to do a very vibrant, beautiful bokeh butterfly. So we're going to start off by wetting our paper really, really well. And I am using a mixture of marine blue and viridian hue. And I'm trying to get it as saturated as, as I can. Now I'm coming in with that marine blue, but I'm also mixing it with neutral tint so I could get this really, really contrasting background. This reference photo is just gorgeous. It's a free reference photo, either from Pixabay or Unsplash. I will have the information in the description below. And I am just using some daubers to get the bokeh effect. Now an interesting thing is I have to keep going over the same spots because the paper is still so saturated that as soon as you dry a section up like that, the water is going to go into that area and almost create little blooms. So I'm sort of evening out the moisture by going over these areas over and over to create soft circles. I don't want any extremely hard edges. So as things dry, it's just kind of fun. Put on some music, sit there, and just keep dabbing. Dabbing, 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 until they start staying like they are now. And they're soft, and they're really gorgeous. Now, as our paper is drying, you could also go over some new areas and you'll get a very fine, fine hint of an impression of some distant bokehs, which actually is really nice. And you know what? It's time to let our paper dry. So with the second layer, please prepare a huge puddle of the paint that you're going to use. It helps a lot to get a nice, even background. There's a huge difference in the saturation with the second coat. It really is worth doing a second coat of the background. So I used a lot of Viridian Hue to get that jewel tone aqua color in there. And I'm using a lot more neutral tint to get my darks as dark as they need to be. Now we're going to let our paper dry actually before we go over the bokeh circles. So once your paper's dry, I'm dipping the bokeh stampers into my water first and I'm rubbing it off on a piece of paper towel. And then I'm picking up the paint. So I'm actually lifting the paint at this point, okay? So we're going to lift up over top of those circles. Some you want to leave a lot more fainter, and then some you want to bring more closer to the surface. So you kind of get this depth with your bokeh. And we're going to let that dry. Wait, what? <laughs> How long have I been doing this? Are you kidding me? All I have to do is press record press a button. It's easy. Yep, I did it again. Sorry about that, but hey, you won't miss anything because the back of this butterfly, we're going to do the same as I did with, with the front, okay? So we're starting off wet on wet. We're just dropping in the same colors that we used for the background. Now the back wing is a lot lighter. There's highlights. There's a light source that is kind of shining onto that back wing and it is a lot lighter as you see in the reference photo. So I'm dropping in the blues but I'm also leaving some negative space. We're going to leave some white of the paper, okay? Coming in with my neutral tint on the tips of the wings as I did with the front wing. There are little hints of orange amongst some of the tips of these wings and I'm adding that as well. I'm adding in the lines with the same colors that we used in the background. Adding a little bit of detail as it's drying, putting in a little bit more of the blue where I need to. Now 
So that's the first coat, folks. Now we're going on to the second coat. So now I am adding some neutral tint to the tips of his wings. And while my paper is still wet, I am adding in those lines. So the back wing I'm letting dry and I'm putting a second coat on the front wings. Now here is where we really need to up our neutral tint color so that we really get that contrast that's gonna separate this butterfly from the background. I'm adding in the lines that I see. You don't have to use neutral tints, you could use black, that would work as well. <gasps> oh no, black, the forbidden color in watercolor. Just, you can, you know, we can have fun, we can use whatever color we want. And as it's drying more, you'll, you will get more defined edges. I'm using a thicker concentration of paint because I don't want to make a bloom. So my paper is drying, but my, I have less moisture on my brush. And that there, my friends, is the key to not making blooms. When your paper is drying, make sure you do not have a wet brush. Make sure that you dab off your brush on a piece of paper towel first and that you have a fairly dry brush. Otherwise, you will make a bloom. So I'm adding in all these little details, all these little lines, and the tips of the wings with this very nice dark finish. He's really popping forward in the foreground now, and he's starting to look pretty good. So I'm leaving that front wing alone, letting it dry, and I'm going back in and adding some more colors to that back wing. But I'm still leaving some white of the paper, as you can see. I am lifting up some of the paint with a flat little brush. And with a very thick, fairly dry brush, I am repeating what I did with the front wing and outlining and darkening the edges. So I'm coming in with my orange and I'm dropping in the orange color where I see that color in the reference photo. Now, if you zoom in onto the butterfly, there are actually these like round circles, patterns in the wings. And so I'm lightly drawing those in there. So once the butterfly dried, I'm adding in the details now, the little antennas. I'm lifting some areas where the light is hitting on that back wing. I'm also lifting where the orange is. Um, it mixed a lot with the neutral tint and didn't look all that orange. So just by lifting off a little bit of the top color is making those little spots uh, pop. And then I'm filling them in with the orange again so that they look more orange. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for stopping by. I love your feedback. Thank you so much for commenting. And as always, I really appreciate your support. And if you guys really liked this video and you're getting value out of my instruction, please think about subscribing. See you guys next week.